Hi, welcome back to the channel. This is part two in the Lua Basics tutorial series. Uh, today we'll be focusing on functions, core object references, and UI text boxes. If you haven't checked out part one, I recommend checking that out first. I'll put a link in the description or a card just up here. And also, if you didn't know, you can catch me streaming on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. I'll put the link in the description for that as well. All right, when you're ready, let's just jump in and get to it. First, let's reopen the Collectathon game project if you haven't got it open already. Once you've opened up the project, we're going to add a UI text box component. So to do that, we're going to go to core content, scroll down to UI elements, then we're going to drag a UI text box into the hierarchy. Once you've dragged the UI text box into the hierarchy, you'll notice it pops in a UI container as well. The UI text box itself is in the top left hand corner, so we can click and drag that wherever we want but I've already got some pre-existing locations that I want to place it. If we go down to properties, we have all these X offset, Y offset, width and height. I've got some property values in mind. So I'm just going to put those in and follow along. So in the X offset, we want zero. In the Y offset, we want 50. In the width, we want 700. In the height, we want 70. And then we want to anchor it to the top center and dock it to also the top center. And one last thing, we want 35 size. We also want to make the justification center. So you're just centering the text using that. The next thing we wanna do is put the UI container into a client context. To do that, we're gonna click on the UI container, right click, create new context, and new client context containing these. If we open that up, you'll see the UI container and UI text box now have client next to them. That just means it's in the client context. In short, the client context folder is run locally on the user's device, not on the server. For this particular game, that's where we want the information to be kept so we can update the text for the player. The next thing we wanna do is create a new script for this particular uh, UI text box. So let's go to new script, create new script. I'm gonna call it score text. Once that script is created, Go to project content, my scripts, and drag score text into the UI text box. That will place it underneath it, like so. And it also becomes client. Once the script is a child of the UI text box, we're going to click on the script. We're going to go down to its properties and add a custom property. We're going to reference a core object reference because it's in the scene, so within the hierarchy. And we're just going to call this score text and add property. You'll see now it's placed a custom property called score text. And if you hover, uh, it comes up with core object reference and then you get a missing object. So it's not actually referencing anything just yet. So what we can do is click and drag the UI text box into the missing slot and that will update what we need to reference. From here, we get into the coding. So again, click on the edit score text button. Push that to the side. I'm just gonna scroll in. So you can do this as well by pressing control and wheel scroll or you can also right click and increase and decrease font size. So once the script is open for editing, we also wanna copy this code that was created for us when we added the custom property, which is very handy. Let's copy that, we'll paste that in, but I'm just gonna get rid of the prop and I'm just gonna make that a lowercase s. So what this line of code is saying is the variable called score text is holding the value, which can be found at script, so this script, so if we go to properties, means this script, get custom property. So we go to custom and it wants the score text, which it's got score text and wait for object. So wait for object just means it's going to wait until that object is referenced correctly. And once it hit has, it will run the next line of code. We're just gonna save that for now. Once we have reference to the UI text box, what we can now do is do some code. So hit enter a few times and get to a new line. And we're just gonna type score text dot text equals and then quotation marks. And within the quotation marks, type however you want. I'm just gonna say, hey, save. Let's minimize that. And so the text currently says text. If we press play, it should say, hey, and it does say, hey. Let's escape out of that. We'll go back to the script. So what this line of code is saying is, the value, which is this, 
which is now held in the var variable score text. So score text dot text equals hey. So this dot text is referencing, if we go to the UI text box, it's actually referencing this thing called text. And we're just updating this. So we can also update it from here if we want. Save that. We'll change this script to hello. Save that. And if we press play, hey will turn to hello. So if you go back to custom properties, you can also add other types of data, such as float, int, and strings, and also booleans. They're things that we mentioned in part one. Uh, there's also other references you can have. But for now, we're just going to do string. We're just going to call it text. And we'll add that. Now that we've created this variable text, which is data type string, we can type in here anything we want. But let's just say, hello, I'm text. We'll save that. Let's copy this line of code that's created for us and just pop it here. And then instead of quotation marks, hello, let's remove that and type prop text. So it'll be referencing the actual string itself. We'll save that. And now this should update to hello, I'm text. Let's escape out of that. The last thing I want to cover in this tutorial is a thing called function, or in other cases called methods, they're the same thing. A function is a block of code that can be called upon when needed to run that specific action. For example, we're going to write in here function. We're going to update text, two brackets, and end. And within this function, we're going to go score.text and place that in and remove that line. So let's just save that. And we'll press play to see what happens. After pressing play, you'll notice the text hasn't updated to what we wanted it to do. So to fix that, we have to do one more line of code. So let's do that. So escape out of play mode. Let's go back to the script. And just underneath, we're going to go update text and in brackets, save that. And we'll run the code again. And as you can see, it has updated the text. So what this function is saying is whenever I'm called, such as update text, which is calling the function to run, it will go score text dot text equals prop text. However, if we were to put this call function up here and remove it from down here, save and press play, we get an error. So this error is saying there is an error on line four, which is here, which is saying, well, no, update text doesn't actually exist. The reason for this is because the function is beneath it. So whenever we call a function, we need to make sure that it's above, uh, above the actual call function itself. So if we were to remove the update line for text, save that and press play, it will now run the code correctly with no errors. And that's the end of part two. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback, please write them in the comment section below. And I look forward to seeing you in part three, where we're going to cover triggers and if statements.